this is a by-election that has taken place in unusual circumstances in which we have a uh, non-mainstream candidate with a well-known uh, track record of effectively appealing to Muslim voters and in a town which also has a record of voting for local champions. So this is not a typical by-election and it's not in a typical place. That said, there are still, I think, two wider things to take away from it. The first, of course, is that while Mr. Galloway's ability to appeal to Muslims, uh, and particularly in the uh, current context of uh, the uh, war in Gaza, um, is longstanding, um, this is a wider issue for the Labour Party in the sense that we know that there is tension within the Labour Party, including amongst its MPs, about Sakir Starmer's relative reticence to criticise uh, Israel's uh, intervention and the scale and character of that intervention. And while it's true that you know most Labour MPs who represent large Muslim populations, and many of them do, also sit on large majorities and probably will be able to withstand a challenge from independent candidates who are likely to have the same kind of appeal as Mr Galloway. That is something they will want to avoid. So I think you can expect the pressure on Sakir Starmer to be increased from at least a section of the Parliamentary Labour Party. Now, the Conservatives, you might think, in the wake of all of this, are going, well, it's great, the opposition are now having a bit of, uh, a bit of discomfort. But, but this actually is the worst performance by the Conservatives in terms of the fall in their share of the vote in any by-election this Parliament in where Labour were trying to defend the seat, even though the reform candidate, Simon Dunzig, actually got less than the 8% that the Brexit Party managed to get in the constituency back in 2019. So, I mean, um, in a sense, George Galloway is right that both Mr Sunak and Sakir Starmer got a bit of a spike in this by-election, although it wasn't just George Galloway did it. We should also acknowledge the success of David Tully, one of the independent candidates who's got a record performance for an independent candidate um, in a by-election, who seems to have articulated much as Cyril Smith perhaps used to do when he was once the town's MP, though now, of course, long since disgraced, um, as articulating the local difficulties, local concerns of the town. And he, he looks as though quite likely that those who weren't attracted by George Galloway over Gaza, um, but were unhappy with the government and uh, other or otherwise discontented or weren't going to vote for the Labour Party in current circumstances, uh, opted for Mr Tully. Lastly, Sir John, how much, we have a general election coming this year, we don't know the date, but we know it's this year. How much do you think affairs in the Middle East, the Gaza conflict, will colour people's voting? Not to that, not to a major extent. Uh, not least because we, the polling is still telling us that while there's been some increase in concern about the position in Gaza, you know, so far as the Palestinians are concerned, most people still either say, "I frankly don't know who I support," or "I just feel equally about both sides." But it is an issue about which some people on both sides of the argument feel intensely. And it will cause, as already suggested, tensions within the Labour Party, where certainly those voters who do take a stance, we know that Labour voters are more likely to take the Palestinian course. And meanwhile, of course, we've seen how the Conservative Party, where sympathies are rather closer to Israel, we've seen the Prime Minister making remarks about uh, Palestinian marches that are somewhat controversial um, and, you know, fits into the wider, is becoming part of the wider debate about how we manage uh, a democracy in what are somewhat troubled times. Always enjoy speaking with you. Thanks, John. Sir John Curtis is a professor of politics at the University of Strathclyde and, of course, a polling expert, as if you need reminding. Three before eight, three minutes before eight. Let's get more of your reaction and your analysis of that vote this morning. Dinesh in Oxford. What should we take from it, Dinesh, in your view? Good morning. Good morning, Nick. Always uh, nice to, uh, talking to you. Good to have you on, sir. Um, thank you. Uh, so, I strongly feel that the moderates in the Muslim community have a lot to answer, and this does not gel with British values. I'll explain a bit more. Mm. We, collectively, are importing the religious-based politics, the populism from Asia, and I've seen that a lot in Asia. This is not good. Similar things are happening in Tower Hamlets. I don't need to explain why. We've got a mayor who has got not so stellar record. Similar thing happening in Hamtruck in the US, where they're entirely Muslim. Uh, 
mayor council has voted against LGBTQ. So there's a lot of trend. This is not good. And it's it's. I, I'm reminded of an Indian saying where the, where they say you burn down the house to kill a rat. This is not good. Say that again. Got, you burn down the house to kill a rat. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, 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 it's so, a bit more precise. That's it's, so it's, smart. It's, God. it's it's basically it. It's it's more <laughs> more clearly. It's like you burn. You, you basically you find a rat in the in the loft and you burn the loft and it. You know what happens next. Yeah, no, I've so got this, it. Yeah, go on, yeah. <laughs> so it's this is the problem. We've got one one issue. We've got far bigger issues as local. We've got the biggest living crisis here. The community have got a lot to answer. The Muslim community have got a lot to answer. They've ignored all the local issues and basically voted for a conflict that uh, on religious grounds. Okay. So here's what I <coughs> excuse me. Here's what I want to ask you. And I hear what you say about Galloway, uh, Mr. Galloway, getting the, 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 the big vote there. How much is Gaza going to be on folks' minds when they cast their vote later this year? I would say 0% because okay. the silent majority are fed up. They're just fed up with the living crisis, everything that's going on, and it's not fair on anyone. Ask a single mom or the single parent who is struggling, living, uh, just trying to get by. 